I appreciate a good culture. I appreciate a good accent. You got the right accent, you can get away with a lot of shit. You be in a club and say something foul to a woman in an American accent, she might slap the shit out of you. Like, excuse me, baby, I don't mean to bother you, but you got a fat ass. I love to take you home, fuck the shit out you. <gasps> Motherfucker. <laughs> English accent, that just roll off the tongue different. Excuse me, I don't mean to bother you, but I'd really love to take you back to my hotel and fuck you doggy stuff a little bit, you know what I mean? <laughs> Motherfucker, where you from? That shit is... Oh my God. Say something else. <laughs> Ladies, y'all laughing. Some of the fellas might try that on the way home. Just so have a good time at the comedy show tonight, it's really. The next light, because you give me a little bit of head, just a little bit. I don't want much, just want you to polish me now, you know what I mean? I ain't even gonna lie, I'll use that shit to get some pussy. I'll walk up to a woman and say anything. Excuse me, you know what time it is? Oh my God, the accent is beautiful. Where are you from? I just make shit up. McDonald's, England, have you ever heard of it? I live right off of Egg McMuffin Lane, have you ever heard of it? Oh my God, girl, you live off of Egg McMuffin, let's go. I tell you what accent is not sexy is that East Indian accent, that 7-Eleven shit, that turban shit, that dot towel shit. Ladies, trust me, you do not want that on top of you on a Saturday night. I'm going to give it to you. I know you wanted, you dirty bitch, and I know you wanted. I'm going to give you my Bagasani beef, you motherfucker. Say my name, say Pumasanji, Pumasanji. Ugh. But like I said, I'd have LL Snoop DMX Jay-Z. I'd have LL do the intro because he just got that cool, suave swagger. Like LL seemed like he don't even need a woman to be turned on. He can stand in front of the mirror, chest naked, and turn himself off. Like he be standing there, DJ, hit that track for me. Yo, what's up, what's up, baby? This your man, LL Cool J. Oh, ain't nothing like when you put vanilla ice cream on your chest, let it melt down in your genitals. I got my man Snoop Dogg, DMX, and Jay-Z in the building. It's about to be real sexual, real erotic, baby. <laughs> hey, yo, Snoop, holla at me, it's your man, LL. Mm. Hey, yo, one, two, three, into the four. Snoop Doggy Dog taking condoms out the door. Ready to get up in you, so back on up. Grab a condom, cause I'm ready to fuck, bitch, fuck. Having three holes is some gangster shit. You know how a dog do when a gangster pimp. We don't sweat shit, cause, cause we know we can't be faded. We just sit back, debate it, while getting our hair braided. Nate Dog, Warren G, Daz, and Corrupt, we gon' rep till we die. That's why we throw them things up. For shizzle, my nizzle, and the LBC. You know my name, Snoop Digo, double G. Yo, it's your man, DMX. Where's my dogs at? Where's my dogs? Uh-huh. <laughs> I done told y'all dogs about, fucking with me. I done told y'all dogs about, fucking with me. When a dog starts to bark, it's followed by the pipe. That's when you feel the pain. And you had it for the life. Don't get upset, nigga. That's just how a dog do. And I won't stop eating until a dog's throat. I bring that real stale, baby. Put that real meal, like that. Yo, Jay-Z, holla at him. Talk to me, man. It's your boy in the building. <laughs> it's young Hover, homie, I told you the king's over I got it locked, oh, yo, shit, stop Said stock car, the persona made for martyr Think you got it locked on barber I'm taking the game farther I'm Croy when I hit it, hell and I when I switch I'm like Ike Turner, and what's love when I'm pissed If you having girl problems, I'll go bad for you, son I got 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one Shaboy, nigga Feed and watch National Geographic Because I like the Nature Channel like, I want to go to Africa one day, go on a safari, see the animals in their natural habitat. But the difference between us and y'all is we stay in the truck. White people, y'all got some shit called up close and personal. Like, it's just amazing, too, because that's what black people, we just know certain shit, you know? Like, white people, that's why I study y'all, envy y'all. I'm, I'm envious of y'all. Y'all are a race. Y'all do whatever the fuck y'all want to do. Y'all, you know, y'all are free. Y'all the only race of people that could look at a wild lion and go, I can be friends with that. <laughs> That's why y'all are always on when animals attack. You will never see black people on when animals attack. You might see us on when cops attack, but you will never see us on when animals attack. Y'all would do shit like tranquilize a lion and hold that motherfucker till he wake up. And that'd be heavy shit to y'all. Y'all be in the camera. <sighs> well, my partner Bob and I, we've been tracking this particular beast for quite some time. 
Her name is Utulu, she's six months old. We just shot her with five cc's of tetracordaline darts. When she gets up, she's gonna be fucking pissed. Oh my God, Bob, do you feel your heart pounding? This is amazing. Oh my God, she's getting a plow. Oh, she mauled me, what an experience. The Africans don't be out there fucking with the lions. They ask them, Mr. Matumbu, why you don't play with the lion? I'm not fucking with that motherfucker. Fuck him and fuck you. That shit is not in the brochure. I'm not doing that shit. When my shift is over, I want to go home to my children, Mangulu, Mungala, and oof, 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 oof. I can't do it fucking with that. When the shit route, you better come, I will leave you in the car. Hi, Noa, Noa, Um, it's rules. Ain't no African people here, is it? Are you African, dog? My bad. I want to piss you off on you. Motherfucker. You know what's fucked up? African people don't like black people. Y'all know they treat us like shit. They talk down to us, they think they better than us. And I don't understand, because we from the same tribe, kind of. But they like white people though, they treat y'all like family. As soon as y'all come around, they get excited. Excuse me, Mr. White Man, thank you for bringing us here. We love you. Yay, the white man. As soon as they see us, they get an attitude. Hey, how you doing? This nigga. We don't like the black man in America. Motherfucker, you don't work, you don't do shit. We don't like you, you black motherfucker. Like, who are you calling black, motherfucker? I'm brown, you midnight. Who the fuck are you calling black? Like, nigga, if you stood up against a building, you'd look like an alley. Who the fuck are you calling black? This shit is unjust. African men don't understand why when they come to America, they have a hard time getting American pussy. You can't be that aggressive with American women, especially black women. You gotta know how to talk, you gotta come correct. Motherfuckers in Africa is used to having their way. They got 15 wives and shit. And African women are very obedient. They tell their women what to do. It's not even an issue. Bitch, when they come home, you... I don't know why they do that. You, you... You, you, better, you better clean this shit from the floor. I don't. They be in the club stalking women out here. You can't even see them. They be as black as my jacket. You just see the yellow of their eyes from a distance. Looking like Congo in the bush. As Soon as you go buy your drink, they jump out the shadows and scare the shit out you. Bitch, what is your name? Come here. Don't run from me. You're going to be my wife. Monaya, Monaya. Monaya, what? They're hunters. It's instant. I went to Belgium. I was excited about that because I'm an action movie fanatic. And I know that's where Jean-Claude Van Damme is from. And ironically enough, I watched that movie on the plane ride over Expendables 2. He plays the bad guy in the movie. He has a fight scene with Sylvester Stallone at the end of the movie. I thought Stallone and Schwarzenegger was hard to understand. Mm. Here's a moment just before the fight. Van Damme says to Stallone, don't try to challenge me. It took me 45 minutes to figure out that motherfucker was trying to say challenge. Don't try to challenge me. I said, what the fuck is a challenge? Sound like a gay black male hairdresser. Oh my God, girl, your hair is nice. Who did you just say? Challenge. Like I can't even believe Salona Schwarzenegger still making action movies. This motherfucker's 187 years old. And I'm a huge Sly fan, I love them Rocky movies. I'm gonna come out with Rocky 48, I'll be right there. My favorite Rocky movie was Rocky 3 when his trainer died. Not because his trainer died, just hearing Stallone cry for the first time was magical. Remember that scene in Rocky 3 when he loses a club of leg the first time? He goes back into the locker room and Mickey's laying on that cot. He's got that blanket over his chest, he's on his last breath. He's like, so rough, so, so rough. Stallone starts crying, Mick, Mick. You ever notice in the Rocky movies, whenever he starts out normal, you can understand him, but the more emotional you get, he just fucking lose you. Like, remember that scene in Rocky 3 when he's standing on the beach and he's all stressed and disheveled, and Adrian's like, Rocky, what's wrong? He's like, hey, Adrian. 
Hey, you know I don't want it no more. What are you talking about? And when I first got in the ring, I didn't care what happened to me. I didn't care. But now as you, as a kid, I want to lose what I got. Will you please, you hatred? I try to turn a baby down and tell a fan. That's when Van Damme should have jumped out the water and said, Don't try to sell it! So, we have to address it. Uh, Bill Cosby, y'all think he did it? See? Listen, if you like me, I'm 39 years old. If you my age and older, you don't want to believe it because, you know, he, you grew up with him. That's, that's our father. That's, that's Cliff Huxtable. But I think we put too much emphasis on celebrity. People act like because you're iconic and talented and famous and rich, you're exempt from being fucked up and doing crazy shit. What makes them any different from regular people? The only thing that makes them different is they got fame, power, and money. That don't mean they can't be, you know, uh, the ability to do fucked up shit. Does that mean Michael Jackson was a pedophile? I don't know. I'm just saying talented people can be fucked up too. I just don't want to believe this shit because in my mind, I'm thinking, what the fuck does Bill Cosby rape sound like? <laughs> going to give me the booty. <laughs> she trying to fight him off the shit. No, Bill, no, bitch. Double, 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 double. I, I just, I don't want to believe it. Nigga, it's, it's scary. It's hard for blacks to make it in Hollywood too, man, because the rules are different. You know, Hollywood, you got you to be humble no matter what color you are. But if you're black, you really got to be fucking humble. You know, because sometimes it don't matter how good you are. I remember I had lunch with Chris Rock one time. He gave me the best advice. He was like, look, man, all I can tell you is one, keep writing. And two, try not to piss these white folks off because that shit is true. It don't matter how good you are. If you're angry, if you're the angry black man, they don't fuck with you. Case in point, Paul Mooney. This motherfucker's a legend. Everybody, y'all know Paul Mooney. This nigga wrote for Richard Pryor and Eddie Murphy. You a bad motherfucker when you writing for other bad motherfuckers. The problem with Paul is, Paul will tell you he's a bad motherfucker. He'll shoot himself in the foot. I remember one time I tried to get him to do a job for Mad TV. I wanted him to be a writer. I said, yo, we already a great show. With Paul, he'll take us to the next level. Paul will go into the fucking meeting and shoot himself in the foot. As Soon as he walked in, the producers were like, Paul, um, Aries recommends you highly. He thinks you're great. Let me ask you, are you familiar with our show? Paul went right into it. I've seen your show. All of you niggas have stolen my material. You've all stolen from me. I've seen it. It doesn't matter. No, homie, homie, listen, listen. In Living Color, Saturday Night Live, you all have stolen my shit. First you stole niggas, then you stole my material. And in case you didn't know, I invented comedy. Nigga, I invented it. And then later on, I'll see Paul and go, Paul, how did it work? Homie, they're not gonna hire me. I'm too real. I'm too real. They're scared of me, homie. I'm too real. Trust me. They love niggas that grin. When you grin, you win. All the niggas that grin, win. Look at Wayne Brady. They love that nigga. That nigga grins. That nigga he has a, a hairdo from the 50s. He wears a perm. He's a throwback nigga. They love him. They love him. Homie, it's true. White folks will tell you, why can't you be more like Wayne? We love Wayne. They love grinning niggas. What about that other nigga that played basketball for the Lakers? The nigga he owns businesses? The nigga with AIDS, Magic Johnson. They love that grinning nigga. That nigga grinned his way through AIDS, nigga. It's true. Have you ever seen that nigga's grin? It's from temple to temple. It's huge. That nigga looks like the cat from Alice in Wonderland. They love that nigga. Here's, here's the thing. If, if you're not grinning, they'll talk about you. It's, it scares white folks. It scares them. I remember one time I was on a lot and they said, good morning, Paul. And I didn't grin. I just nodded my head. They talk about you. Why is that nigga not grinning? That nigga doesn't he know where he is? That nigga should be grinning. And if you grin too fast, you scare white folks. I said good morning to a white woman. I grinned real fast. That bitch was scared. I said good morning. She said, ha, ah, ah. That bitch took off winning. Nigga, it's true. Is that nigga gay? Like everybody in this room, individually, sexually, has something that you are into that is downright filthy, uh, disgusting. No one knows how nasty this is 
but you and the Lord. <laughs> like if anybody else knew what the fuck you was into, you would have to leave the country. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what my thing is. I am an aggressive snatch sniffer. Uh, I love to smell a woman snatch. And I'm not talking delicate like a wine cork, like, huh, huh, no. I get into the muzzle. I will wear a woman's pussy on my face like a surgical mask and inhale to my ribcage show. <laughs> Have me making the Cosby face. Like, I like a woman's pussy to have a little mugginess to it. Is that a bad smell? No, no, like a muggy, like an early morning. The sun's just coming up. You could smell the moisture off the grass from the sprinkler system. The coffee's percolating, the bacon. Like, the day is beginning. Like, oh, good morning. I'm just saying, as a straight man, it's kind of hard for me to wrap my mind around that concept. Because I am a fan of pussy. Like, I know all straight men love pussy, but I have a sickness for pussy. Oh, dear. Pussy is the greatest, most natural single sense. Like, let's be honest. There's only four things in life that feel really good. Only four. Fucking, eating, getting high, and scratching an inside ass itch. <laughs> oh, fuck y'all. Don't judge me. Don't act like I'm the only motherfucker that's ever felt pleasure from scratching an inside ass itch. You know it feels good, because when have you ever done it and not closed your eyes? And you hum a little bit. Mm. <laughs> Who the fuck scratches an inside ass itch with their eyes wide open? <laughs> it's one of the best feelings in life. <laughs> but I'm saying pussy, oh my God. Ladies, you understand how magical that contraption is between your legs? Men start wars over pussy. We at war right now in the Middle East. It ain't got shit to do with terrorism. It's about oil, and oil is money. And if you got some money, you get some pussy. It's about pussy. <laughs> Ladies, you don't give yourselves enough credit. Next time you get out the shower and you're butt naked and wet, take a second, look at yourself in the mirror and high five your pussy. Bow. <laughs> Salute yourself, you're worth it. I wish I could randomly go around high fiving pussies. I wish I could do it. Excuse me, miss, you know what time it is? 3.30, thank you, bitch. Bow. Even the fact that I mentioned the word pussy, I can look in the room and I see some of you ladies looking at me drawing back. Like, uh, stop it, this is for you. I'm trying to tell you we don't celebrate women's bodies enough. Ladies, y'all need to stop getting caught up in some of these women's magazines and paying attention to some of these anorexic ass actresses fucking with your head trying to define for you what beauty is supposed to be. Because I got news for you. As men, we don't give a fuck <laughs> about what you give a fuck about. The minute you get butt naked, you've won. You got us. You think we really give a fuck about some love handles? Our standards are not that high. We fuck you from the back. You got love handles. We're like children. We act like we drive in a car. <laughs> Honk on your butt cheek, bitch. Beep, beep, move. We don't give a fuck. I love pussy, goddammit. Oh, I'll be glad when they put that shit in the toothpaste. Jesus Christ. I'll be at CVS for 47 tubes of pussy paste. I brush my teeth four times a day. I wouldn't even rinse, just suck it dry. It's a beautiful word, pussy, isn't it? Like if a woman came up to me and said, sir, eat my pussy. <gasps> Absolutely. If a woman said, eat my vagina, mmm, sound too much like vegetables. I don't know, man, it's crazy, too much. You know, I respect the art. Like, I get upset when I hear about these actors that get paid $20 million a movie to act. And the key word is act. But they pay this to dudes who never can fucking act. How do you pay Stallone and Schwarzenegger $20 million a movie? Pay that to the dudes who deserve it, like Pacino, De Niro, Denzel. Morgan. This has a fucking actress, man. Because to this day, one of my favorite movies of all time is Heat with Pacino and De Niro. Anybody that's ever seen the movie knows what I'm talking about. It's like they took the two greatest actors of all time and put them in a scene together. If you've never seen the movie, go rent it, smoke a joint, it's great. <laughs> they got that scene where they meet for the first time and Pacino's sitting there with De Niro. He's bringing shit down to him. He's like, you, sir, are a bad guy. I am the police. It's my job to stop guys like you, murderers, rapists, killers. It's what I do. 
There may come a time when I pass cross. I'm going to have to take you down. I won't like it, but I'll do it. Keeps me hot on my toes where I got to be. <laughs> De Niro comes back. You know, there's a flip side to that coin. A good friend of mine, Jimmy, once told me, never get attached to anything that you cannot walk out on in 15 seconds flat if you spot the heat coming around the corner. And I also like guys like you that like guys like me because you keep me hot on my toes where I got to be. And you're right. Our pants, they may cross. I'm going to have to take you down. I won't like it, but I will not. No, 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 no. Hesitate. Great scene. Now, hold up. Picture the same scene with Stallone and Schwarzenegger. You ain't going to be able to understand shit. Stallone is doing, but you know, you want to do it, you want to do it, you want to do it. You know, there's a flip side to the client. I might have to take it down. I won't like it, but I'll do it. Even deaf people are like, what do you think? I don't even know, what do you think? Can you imagine him asking his woman for head? Maria, come on, give me head, go down. Don't come up for air. Breathe to your ears. <laughs> Fellas, you want to freak your woman out during sex? Make that noise. Or the fuck up. You be hitting from the back. <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? Don't worry about what's going up here. Put your head down. <laughs> Ladies, it'll work for you too. You don't want to get your man head? Do that. It'll stop immediately. As soon as you get down there. How? <laughs> How? <laughs> Bitch, what the fuck? What you making? Keys or something? No, you ain't gonna put a handicap sign on my balls. I'm good to go. That's a good noise to make if you want privacy in a public bathroom. You will clear that motherfucker right out. As soon as you get in there. <laughs> Sir, you all right? Get down, get the way. It's going to be an explosion. Get to the chopper, now. I don't know why he says that. He says that in every move. Get to the chopper, now. I like to make that noise on a crowded elevator, especially if I got to fart. People just assume there's something wrong with me. As soon as I rip one, oh my God, what was that? Uh, uh, smell it, it's nasty, smell it. Get to the chopper, get down. Oh my God, he's retarded. He didn't even have a helmet on. Oh my God. You know what's funny? Some of y'all are laughing, but some of y'all are gonna go home and fuck tonight. And when you come, you're gonna do that. It's gonna be hilarious. Like, girl, I'll let you. Uh, uh. I'm finished, get me a paper towel, come here. Wipe me down, get to the chopper, now. Don't drink and drive, because if you get pulled over, that's exactly how you sound. Sir, have you been drinking? Uh, uh. I had the Jaeger and Patron to the chopper, now. Uh, we're gonna need backup, we're gonna need backup. And apparently we need a chopper, I don't know why, but. Actually, I actually met Arnold Schwarzenegger, man. True story. I was doing a show in San Jose, California. And uh, it's like a five and a half hour drive outside of LA. And I stopped at a Chevron, and this motherfucker was on pump number seven, filling up his H2. Now, I don't really get starstruck. Like, if this had been Van Damme or Seagal, I'd have been like, whatever. This is fucking Terminator. This is Conan. Like, I grew up on this motherfucker. And I saw him, and I was so excited. I was like, yo, Arnold, man, I love your shit. He ain't even look at me. He was just like, yeah, how are you? And I called my boy and I said, nigga, you ain't gonna believe it. Arnold Schwarzenegger is on pump number seven, filling up. He was like, nigga, you lying. I said, I swear to God. He was like, Arnold Schwarzenegger? I said, nigga. <laughs> and Arnold heard me and I swear he went just like this. <laughs> it's like his Marco Polo, he understood. It was like a mating call, he knew. Some of the fellas might remember where I got that. Remember the scene in Predator when he got ready to fight the alien and he covered himself with mud? He was like, I'm here, kill me, come on, do it! How, <laughs> how? <laughs> that shit. Funny, man. So I'm saying, fellas, can't always be honest with your woman in bed. Sometimes you be fucking your girl and you feel yourself getting ready to come and you announce that shit. Don't announce it, just do it. Because when you announce it, that's when it backfire on you. Babe. <sighs> I'm about to, I'm about to come. As you know what she gonna say, don't come yet. <laughs> Ladies, do you know how hard it is for a man to stop an oncoming nut? It take every muscle in a nigga body to seize up at once. 
we got to pull from our toes all the way up. From the side, we look like a question mark. A man will go into cardiac arrest behind that shit. All of a sudden, sex turn into a crime scene. Detectives show up. Hey, what do we got? Dude tried to stop a nut. And black people, we got too much stress. Motherfucking police is out of control, ain't they? Police is out here killing niggas like we deers. I'm surprised they ain't taking pictures with us posing us, holding us by ears. It's fucking scary, man. Hey, it's getting so bad, even white people start not to like the police. But y'all don't, don't respond the way we respond. It's different emotions. White people, when the cops pull y'all over, y'all get mad because you can't believe they had the audacity to pull you over. As soon as y'all hear that noise, whoop, whoop, see them lights, you're like, fucking cops! The fuck does he want? As soon as he gets to my window, I'm gonna give him a piece of my mind. Black people, we don't get angry, we get uncomfortable. We get the hot booty rim hole. You know what the hot booty rim hole is? That's that feeling you get when you think you got the fart, but you realize you got the shit. Cause the rim of your booty hole heat up. As soon as we hear that noise, it whoop, whoop, niggas be, uh oh. I gotta get a toilet seat put in my car, niggas. And I'm not just here to tell jokes. I actually wanna give back. I wanna help white people. I wanna be like y'all's black Dr. Phil. Because comics, we don't do much when we're on the road. We stay in the hotel room and watch TV. And I'm flipping through the channels, and I'm watching these, some of these programs like Oprah and Phil, and I'm noticing some of y'all's kids is out of fucking control. I really want to ask white people, why don't y'all beat y'all kids? Beat them, whoop they motherfucking ass. Y'all give y'all kids all kind of timeouts and special places. What the fuck is a special place? To a black child, that's a coma. What is a special place? Black kids don't know shit about time out. We know about getting knocked the fuck out, that's it. My mother used to slap the shit out of me in public and I would look at people for help. Like, shut up. <gasps> White people felt my pain. Oh my God. She just struck her child. Black people see black kids get hit. We like, hey, get your shit together. You know what I found out growing up totally shocked me? White kids are just as shocked to find out black kids don't talk back to their parents as we are when we hear them talk back to theirs. Because I used to have a little buddy would come over my house on the weekends, little Nate. We'd be in my room playing video games. My mother used to come in the room on us and cuss me out for no reason. Just scare the shit out of both of us, right? We'd be in the room playing Mario Brothers. She'd come kick open the door like SWAT. We on level four, she just Aries, how many times I done told you to clean this motherfucking room? Cut that goddamn game off and clean this room. I come back, this motherfucking room ain't clean. I'm gonna take that Nintendo cord, wrap it around your neck, and stick it in your ass. Nigga, I ain't playing with you. This ain't no threat. This a promise. Try me, motherfucker. Try me. My white friend would turn to me offended, like, dude, what the fuck? She can't do that, man. This is your space. This is your area. She's violating your right to privacy. You should say something. You want me to go say something? I'd be so scared. I started talking to him like a slave from Roots, like, he was going to get me in troubles. I like you, Nate. I really do. But my parents is good black folk that gives me food, that gives me sleeps. Now you get away from around here with that foolishness. Get from here. Mmm. My mother smacked the shit out of the white boy. He turned into me. Wait in the water. Mm. <laughs> it's crucial, man. I was at Popeye's Chicken around the playoffs for basketball, and I'm arguing with this motherfucker about my order. He didn't understand me. I didn't understand him. Shit was terrible. I was like, dog, let me get a two-piece chicken dinner. He tried to repeat the shit back to me. Hey, you want it to be yicky? Do you want the spicy or the mild? I said, what? He said, the spicy or the mild? I said, what nigga you know put mayonnaise on chicken? Why would I put mayonnaise on chicken? I'm a hot sauce nigga. My daddy was a hot sauce nigga. He said, no, the mild for the flavor. I said, what the fuck is flavor? He kept looking at the menu like it was family feud and the answer was gonna pop up on the board. I gonna tell you the doobie chicken with the spicy or the mild, so you better, you better get it for you. 
said, let me get a two-piece chicken spicy. He said, you want it busy? I said, yes, motherfucker, I'm busy. I don't have time for this shit. I'm trying to catch the game. Kobe's on, nigga, come on. He said, no, it busy. I said, what the fuck is it busy? Chupuri de body and the cream cheese. I said, a biscuit? He said, see, see, he's gonna tell you with the doobie jiggy, which is spice your demand. They're gonna come with it busy, so you better get it for you. Andale, andale, iba, iba. He said, let me get a two-piece chicken spicy with a biscuit. He said, now you have to pickle your sides. I said, I'm not playing with my penis and Popeyes. I'm not doing that. Why would I pull my dick out and jack off near the crunchy? I'm not doing it. He said, no, you get two side order. I said, what kind of side you got? He said, we have a day. We have a day. It was we have the, but we have a day. We have a day, yakaroni and yeast. We have a day, yash potato. I said, fuck it, let me go with the yash potato. She wants something to drink? I said, what do you have to drink? We have a day. Well, how about the sodas and the uses? I said, I don't want no soda, but I'm curious about your uses. The fuck is use? Well, how about the apple use, orange use, grapefruit use? Listen, the point is we have to demand more from our illegals. I'm Ari Spears and I approve this message. We have to demand more, it's unacceptable. I get people to come to me after my shows and hand me nickel bags, blunts, joints. I had a white boy one time give me some edible weed. I wish somebody would have told me that edible weed is 50 times more potent than the shit you smoke. And when white boys give you weed, they come with warning labels. You gotta listen to shit they say. I had a white dude give me five miniature Reese's pieces sized cups of edible weed. I was like, dog, is this shit even strong? This white boy looked me dead in my face and was like, dude, trust me. You do that, you're gonna see tomorrow, today. Like, God damn. I ate all five of the motherfuckers. I was driving home. I was like, man, this ain't shit. Cut to, I'm in my house, butt naked. <laughs> making carpet angels, nigga. <laughs> my nuts had eight hours of rug burn. That shit was serious. <laughs> Funny thing is, you don't even realize how racist America is until after you leave. You know? Like, I did a show not too long ago in Edmonton, Canada. There is no racist vibe in Edmonton. Well, first of all, ain't no niggas out there, so ain't nobody be mad at... <laughs> But I must have walked around that motherfucker for four days looking for a black person. Finally, I saw one. I ain't even know the motherfucker. I just ran up to him and hugged him. Like, nigga, where you been? We need to stick together. He was offended. He was like, dude, get your hands off of me, bro. It's like totally absurd. I was like, shit, they got him. It was too late. I couldn't save him. I had white kids looking at me like I was an exotic animal. It was like, mom, look at him. He's so chocolatey. I want one. He kept trying to pour milk on me. I was like, it ain't gonna change colors. The fuck off me. And I see some of the white people, y'all getting uncomfortable. Don't get uncomfortable. I love white people, man. Y'all my people too. It's just certain shit I can't do with you. Like go drinking. Every time I do a show in front of white people, after the show, y'all always wanna hang out and buy me a drink. I can't drink with y'all. And it's not that I don't want to, it's just I can't hang. You motherfuckers are the undisputed champs of drinking. Y'all drink till y'all fall the fuck out. And I know when y'all get good and drunk because that's that noise y'all make. Woo! Don't do that. That's scared black folk. There's a lot of bad history behind that noise. Black people, we hear woo! We start looking out for pickup trucks. Where the fuck they at? See, this one I don't like fucking with Earl. He played too much. I'm serious, a party ain't a party to y'all till the fucking cops show up. And black people, y'all know, we see the police party over. White people, y'all have a freedom we just don't have. Y'all see the police, y'all get braver. Dude, what's your fucking badge number and your name? No, don't fucking touch me. What if I fucking touch you? No, you shut the fuck up and move along. Aries, why are you crying? Relax. Do you know who my dad is? I'll sue, I swear to God. Get the fuck on. Black people, we be in the back doing sign language. Mm, nigga, mm, mm. 